as you probably understood from Catalina, we know each other since many years ago and we practice a lot about gaming simulation together. Um, uh, Supposed to give you some overview about how is uh, in intervening the meaning of change in city. So what I try to do is uh, right now is to give you some ideas on the state of art of uh, urban gaming simulation. Uh, more talking probably about theory, but be ready because at the end of a lecture, I will. We will play a small game. And uh, I would like to start with something uh, taking just a uh, pin, something from the discussion that we had this morning, the discussion that we had in the lunch, that was about the use of the word game. Um, in every field, but especially in the field that are so called, uh, we called weak science, that are the science that has to do with the hard science. I mean, not with geology or uh, looking uh, uh, this morning, Professor Klaber's show us some pictures from natural environment. So the science that are uh, involved in this kind of uh, studies are considered hard science. The science that are involving human beings, they have a statute that is, let's say, more weak. I don't think so, but this is the perception. So in this area, when you talk about or use the word of game, everybody is uh, afraid of and doubt about the usefulness of uh, the full meaning of the use of it, etc. So what I would like to, to show to you is that to talk about game uh, in urban planning and urban design is like to play a game for kids, natural one. So in the, in the, in the city itself, uh, we are playing. We play the city and we, uh, you know, we try to uh, make um, the city playing for us. I will start with uh, some quotation from Bruno Munari that was a designer. This morning we heard about design, the science of design. Designer themselves of, are the, the, the core of the, of the uh, art of design. And he wrote some, he's a famous designer who wrote some small um, books. Uh, and uh, one of them is about poets and uh, aphorisms. So I would like just that you pick up in your mind, pick up it and keep in your mind that the title is Without Reason. So, one plus one is two. Far is feeling from calculus. Yellow plus blue, blue plus hundreds of green. Far is reason from art. So we are in, uh, um, uh, in the same uh, situation uh, that is described in this small, in this small um, phrase. Um, so, uh, there is another prejudice. Uh, it's not only the prejudice about games, because they, if you look at them as a games of game theory, it's fine, but uh, in, if we are not talking about game theory. This must be clarified not right now, because we can catch some, something from this, this field or this domain, but we are not talking about this. It is a part. Uh, is a part of game science. Um, also, uh, the, the problem is not if they are childish or not. The problem is that I said if they are scientific or not scientific. Uh, so, uh, for us, starting from the point about virtual, uh, games themselves in urban planning are virtual environment. Uh, it means that we use the gaming simulation as an environment when we can simulating processes of transformation or development and uh, of real or imaginary systems. 
And the games in this, in this field serve as a mean for enhancing information exchange, communication, and participation among the parties involved. Uh, so this is the meaning in, in, uh, in um, let's say, in, um, uh, in urban planning. So uh, we'll split in some main point. The first one is uh, how we, um, uh, we consider the, the city in the gaming simulation. Um, we consider the city as, uh, uh, in a game as a, the space of simulation. Uh, there is a long history of representation in iconography, cartography, and other things uh, that are that gain mythical qualities like uh, um, Calvinos or Ecos or Borges uh, representation of the city. Like here, by the way, is uh, uh, Japanese uh, photographers who paint, who create dioramas with with pieces of cities is, is quite famous, so Enishinos. And this is uh, what he is working is about the work of a, an ancient, I mean, um, cartographer, Japanese cartographer, Ino Tadataka, that during 19th centuries uh, draw in uh, uh, all the atlas of the, 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 the Japan. And as you can see here, he, because it, this is a representation, um, a copy, a reply of what was his work, he is representing in a way that you can walk, walk through, walk in. You can, you can understand how it is, not looking just at the small picture, but the big one. So before to go ahead, we, I think that we must be clarified that we are talking about three different types of, or classes of games. We have, in, uh, in our field, games about planning and building cities, games about transforming cities, and games about conquering cities. And uh, what, if I skip the word game, and I use the word design, okay, it's the same. It's matching perfectly. So what, uh, what is the meaning of uh, planning and building cities? Um, when you, you design a game, you are planning or creating a game, uh, you find that it shows or you can show various developments. The one that are physical one, the one that are virtual one, and also the one that are not tangible, exactly, like behaviors. Uh, but in, uh, um, usually, when we think about this kind of games, uh, we think about only one player, or if there are many players, only one, you use the word facilitator, but I will say uh, um, designer, that, um, or only one team that decide. And this is, uh, this is because on the starting point of the urban planning science, we assume that we can take under control everything. So our vision of, uh, of the, the planning or creating or uh, building cities is like the demiurgo. I'm God, I can do everything. And it's not like that. But the, 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 there are styles and, and different things that are uh, implemented by the designers. And uh, so uh, we almost built uh, in this way as designer and as game designer, we built Utopia. Uh, this is urban Utopia and I want to go into, but this is an interesting uh, study to, to, to study urban Utopias, not only from the point of view like uh, Shoe studied, but also like list how the physical development in urban utopias develop along, along centuries. So I, the main uh, characteristic of, of this uh, design is that this game crystallized uh, or petrified the environment in only one way. So 
we design it like uh, here. Even if we design moving cities, this is Archigram from, uh, by Archigram, walking cities, a famous one in the, in the 70s. And they design cities that can move these, these monsters that you, can f you have on your, on your right. Uh, even if you construct this, you don't put dynamic. You have a static, petrified model of city that is not interacted with any, anything else than the, the ground that, where they are moving. The second type is uh, games about transforming cities. Uh, this is also uh, um, a kind of game that, uh, uh, let's say, is quite common. So we have uh, an initial scenario, whatever you can call scenario, is the state of art, is uh, something that is uh, a set of uh, situations uh, or activities that you can do, but this is a scenario, so initial step, uh, initial env environment and that is given. And the players can do different things in this scenario. They can uh, try to uh, find option to enlarge it, to redefine it, to maintain, I mean, as it is. So they have different options. The freedom of it is, of course, uh, given by the designer. Uh, this is one of the, 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 the game that I really, I really like. Uh, I think that you are familiar with Wells. Traveling in the future. Herbert Wells, the writer. Do you have familiar with uh, traveling in the future? Okay, he wrote a book that is, uh, uh, that is about to travel in, in, into the time, so the dimension of time. And uh, he wrote also a nice book a small book that is uh, dedicated to the, uh, his experience with his sons. He uh, called it uh, Building Cities. I don't know if it is right in, in English, the translation, but I think it's Floor Games, sorry, Floor Games. Um, this is um, an interesting experience. He had in his house an entire room that is filled with some artifacts. And every time he built, he developed, he, he do something every day with his sons in order to understand to create a city. But in order to do this, every day they have to sum up what they did before or maybe to give interpretation of what they did before or give interpretation what is going to do it, each of them. So this is an interesting uh, metaphor for me because uh, uh, let's say it's like uh, uh, the interpretation. A father and his son are confronted with a structure, not only of the planning, so to plan where to put things, but also in interpreting it each time when a piece or a part of the city is be built or altered. It means that they don't are going just to act and this is important phase in, uh, in a game. The interpretations involve later modifications, addition, demolitions, conservation, search of new materials and different environments. This game is the most similar one to urban gaming simulation, which faced the problem of the analysis of urban system and their problems. In this game, they use uh, different artifacts. They're not using just bricks or roofs. It's not a Lego game let's say, okay, is something different. They can use just pieces that they collect, just a bottle of glass that they collect during the day, and they try to do how it fits on the city that are, that are designing. So uh, that is, in a word, our job. Uh, there is uh, the third group of, of games that is about conquering city. If you think that I'm using a strong word as a conquering city, I will tell no, because you have just to think not only to the war side or military side, so you have to, uh, to, to, to think about economic development, city marketing, and other 
field where you want to conquer a city. So in this third type of game, uh, I always, I, I mean, I hope that I'm not boring you, but there is an interesting story about Monopoly. My, my, my former, the people that was working with me knows that is about the fact that Monopoly, that is now a commercial game, it was not. It was designed as a tool to, even not educational tool, not training tool. It was designed as communication device to make people, uh, in this case, uh, inhabitants of some part of cities, to understand how could be the fact or new law and taxation in the United States. And it was designed by a young economist, Margie. Uh, she designed and developed uh, the, the game uh, using with different communities, using with different uh, university. It was beginning of uh, uh, 20th century. Then, just to tell the story, how games happened to develop, it was bo bought by um, a German engineer and he sold it to the commercial company and it became Monopoly. But still, it keeps the uh, structure of, um, let's say, mm, a virtual environment that you can use for to explain some meaning of uh, urban development. So when people just laugh at me and say, ha, 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 what are you doing, Monopoly? What are you playing? Oh, do we need to play Monopoly? I'm serious and say, yes, why not? It was designed by a scientist with scientific purposes. So, uh, there is another element that we have to take into account about uh, the, 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 the game and simulation, and we, I'm more, uh, let's say, uh, fond uh, of board games and role play games than of um, softwares. Uh, even if I worked in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in information communication technologies and I developed softwares for urban games, I developed uh, also games for internet, but I'm really fond of uh, board games. But nevertheless, we cannot avoid technology. Mm, sorry, it's not right uh, I'm using technology because we assume information technology right now. I'm using like technology. Like Nietzsche said about the typewriter that when we, we uh, it was uh, created, it was produced, it, it was a sort of uh, not only augmented reality, but this, uh, these uh, instruments that meanwhile we are using is influencing our thoughts. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, is uh, right now is difficult for some people just take note. They have to type on the computer. So this is uh, this is the explanation of what. So uh, this technology, any kind of technology, but this technology modifies the form and the content and the support of the game. So. I can give you an example. For instance, uh, we talk about Monopoly, but now we can go to the other father of software on, of urban gaming simulation, that is SimCity. If I ask you who played SimCity? Hmm. Few. You too, yes. So, just few. What do you think about SimCity? Is it? <laughs> okay. Why? It sounds nice. <laughs> it sounds nice. Okay. Okay. This is but this is more approach that is but in the in the meaning of of it is what is uh, is written by an Italian scientist who wrote a book about the meaning and the use of SimCity for urban planners, uh, Marco Bitanti. He said. 
the specifically human need, the need to miniaturize the reality, reconstruct it in microscopic form in order to make the experience of the world comprehensible. The reduced replica is comprehensible, manageable, and reassuring. SimCity produces not only spaces, but also chronology. This is the good, the good point about SimCity for a player that is not a player that is aware of the meaning of urban planning, of the meaning of urban design, but for a player that is, you know, is trying to think how this environment is working, how I can modify it, how I can keep under control. Uh, I was talking that my, often I offer this example when I play with my students in urban planning or urban design or architecture after two, two games, they said, oh, it's boring. I mean, I have no interest because I know how it works. So the features is not so, oh, is attractive, but it's not so important because the interaction is not so high. It seems high, but it's not. So once you discover the algorithm of the game, that's fine. You say, okay, you can obtain these things, but what, what does it change? You know, I just have pictures, different pictures. But what happened is um, uh, the, 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 the thing is that if it keeps chronology, it doesn't keep memories. It's not a game that keeps memories of what you are doing. The answer, for instance, you have the mayor, oh, people is rioting, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I'm, I'm talking about the, the fundamental version of SimCity. There are different kinds of SimCity that you can play online, but they are almost not close to failure. Uh, if you are not playing with uh, a team that is really close to each other. Um, is an absence of memory. So what, what is uh, important, not, um, not the memory that you intend as chronology of things. So you see how the scenario developed, but is the collective individual memory of the inhabitants. So as you see, we are slowly, slowly going into something that is different from only physical interaction and is not only, let's say, simulation. And then, you know, you have these results in trying to overcome this problem. Sims, everybody, I think, heard about Sims. So, no, everybody heard about Sims, right? Do you know what the Sims is? Okay, so it's the same game, but this, the, you are using different, uh, like artificial words, something like that, so you have an avatar, you enter in, and you interact, you build your own and interact with others. What happened is that someone built someone that is building someone else that is building cities. So this is really interesting process. So why? I think that the answer is because you are disappointed by the fact when you are, you know, really a skilled player, you are disappointed what I'm doing here, just building. And it's even less uh, funny than, I don't know, Pac-Man or something like that, you know? So, because you have a lot of instruction to follow. So, just a word, keep it simple, your game. But by the way, there are a lot of instructions. So what you want is just to improve your capacity to interact and to see what is going on. So this is a really, uh, I think, not yet well studied, but this is a really uh, a good example how um, the gaming simula the, the, the so-called urban gaming simulation of this, uh, of this kind are useless, let's say. Uh, the, the city in the game of, CC, of Sim City, but almost in all urban games, is only the surface of the city. Is, uh, mm, the element of design is, is, is the most important activity that you can do in this surface, more than other qualities. And uh, uh, as I told you, 
actually the, this uh, problem of the absence of memory, uh, I repeat myself, absence of memory doesn't mean to record your actions, okay? Because they do, they record your actions, they build what you built, and they design what you designed, and they destroy what you contribute to destroy, but there is no memory. And uh, so this is uh, the, the point from where we, using also um, another, another problem that is limits for cognitive models that you can apply to these kind of games are, in my opinion, a new border, new area where you, have, you can have confrontation and dialogue. Uh, before to go to the, the space of interaction, uh, there are a lot of uh, games that actually, uh, like Uncle Roy, or um, Raid of Banglin Bay, or um, you know, um, I don't, Sly City, that where the players are using hot multi artifacts or multi materials i mean the players can play with media uh, they can do actions and they do in the physical environment let's say pac manhattan this this kind of game okay so you do in the physical environment but it's still something that increases your memory but not that much so the the city game is the space of interaction uh, we had a lecture today and uh, this morning, uh, quite, uh, as Professor Klaber is, quite, quite clever and elegant. So he showed us all the, the elements of all systems, right? That is actors, rules, and, and um, uh, resources. So through this, this vision, we can really exploit any, explore any, uh, any field, any, any, any kind of, of uh, discipline. But let's say that in the vocabulary, in our dictionary, a verbal planner, the terms, roles, sectors, resources, scenarios, rules, strategies are really quite crucial, are important one. We use them, it's our glossary. And um, um, here we can, you know, uh, uh, based on my experience, I can say uh, that uh, without to look to other disciplines and they're using other uh, disciplines also where the human uh, element is fund fundamental. Um, in urban gaming simulation, we can see that all this uh, vocabulary has a strong relation with the game. Uh, sorry, uh, as the urban planners, all this vocabulary has a strong relationship with, relationship with game. So this is the why we say the space, space of interactions. Uh, you know, these are uh, some pictures, old ones, but I think really good one with a group of people that is talking not about their own city, but creating a fictitious one, and then through this fictitious one, they will create their own idea of the city. And the game itself, as you can see, is, is quite uh, simple. Just paper and words and talk. It means the interactions. Uh, So, um, when, uh, uh, one of the most important points actually in the um, urban planning, urban design, in architectural design, is uh, the problem of the level of participation. And uh, what you can, how you can build a participatory process, how you can improve a participatory process. And in the moment, for myself, I'm not a sociologist, so I hope that sociologists will forgive me, but I always use the, this quotation by uh, Kravchenko that is, is said that there is um, a new 
paradigm to analyze the society right now that is the uh, two words, two key words. One is McDonaldization and the other is gamification. So uh, you can find some uh, elements in common of these two processes. And uh, this is, uh, um, in his view, is a new paradigm of rationality, typical for modern conditions of indefiniteness and the expansion of institutional risk in which order is born from chaos. So uh, this, in my view, looking at the gamification, is almost what happened in the sector of entertainment games more than, than, than others. So we have the same process that are following the, 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 this, this, the concept of McDonaldization. Uh, while McDonaldization acts according to a predefined sequences of phases and rules, gamification also f uh, is following the common rules. It establishes habits generates new models of interaction and modify the rules. So this is from, uh, let's say, just transfer to gamification. And uh, the other key, key points in the gamification is they have, we want to calculate, no, we want to calculate, sorry. There are three different um, uh, levels of uh, uncertainty unpredictability, and uh, um, habits, I mean behaviors, sorry. Uh, so um, the gamification somehow, like McDonaldization, try to find uh, a sort of model of calculation of this, a model of control, how to control this. Uh, I'm sorry to refer a lot of, of the lecture of today, but we were talking about reflection, reflexive. And uh, in the case of gamification, uh, the, the, the control is, is the maximum, the aspect that we want to keep, uh, um, let's say, that we want to keep. So the, in this case, uh, the gamification is reflexive. So, uh, if we follow this and we think about how the, 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 the gaming simulation can, can, can work and uh, in the urban um, field, we follow that planning assumes a form of the desired project. So the actor itself can control his own action. It can ver verify his needs and it could interact with others. These are the elements of this kind of games. So uh, the elements, sorry, the possible actions. And there are communicative and non-communicative manipulation, uh, influences of multiculture, and uh, the social structure of a game. The game itself as a social structure, even if we are not aware of. Um, so, when we look at this kind of games, uh, we think, okay, we want to keep under control, but there are a lot of accidents and unpredictability of our behaviors. But in my view, this is not a failure. This is just a new beginning of new way of thinking, new thoughts, new activity. <laughs> so we're going back to human behavior. Uh, Seat itself, uh, this is one of my, my most favorite quotation. City is more made by ideas than bricks. And this is the truth. We are thinking that no, this is the, the bricks that we, we are, are talking about, but is ideas. And uh, Sylvie Rimbert, uh, this is a French geographer. She wrote a book about this. And uh, so uh, I think that uh, this in the last, and especially in the connections of 
urban planning, we had uh, um, information technology, information, new information communication technologies is lost. Um, and another quotation is by Castells in Borja. This is uh, remembering that why is made by idea, more by ideas, because if you think that is made more by flows. Flows, not only physical flows, that are physical and exchange, that are not, uh, of course, only physical flows. I mean, people that is moving from one place to the other place, but is information, data, blah, blah, blah. I think that you are familiar and you heard a lot about this. So a city, they say, has always been a place for exchange, and now it has become a space for places and flows. And while the space of flows is globally integrated, the space of places is globally fragmented. We often confuse the word place and space. We use as synonymous. They are not. Place as identity and meaning, space not always. So in our case, of course, information and communication. Oh yes, we think that are made by, 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 by flows. And at the moment, when I look to some of urban gaming simulation, for me it's like here, that you are just at the window, block and you cannot, just observing something. So it's what almost the, the city now and the urban gaming simulation that are following this, this view are doing. Uh, uh, this is, I mentioned before, that there are several uh, games that are played using different media and, and devices and uh, using mobiles, palm tops, blah, blah, blah. So I think that this uh, make, makes the uh, interactivity really high. And, but we have uh, to be aware that this media introduce the level of the space, of the urban space, they put it in the virtual level. So it's true that it's a space of uh, flows and exchanges, but, but, but at the same time, players may become guinea pigs in techno-social experiments, like in city tech, where you know, the authors wanted to explore how uh, examine a potential of uh, social behavior or group interactions in public space using for, uh, um, let's say, mobile, mobile device. So I think that personally, I would not like to be a pig, in <laughs> a pig, right? Guinea pigs for any, anyone. So, but this is what happened. This is what happened in, uh, 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 new information technologies. And since the beginning, I, I have to, I, I'm not, uh, may I give you a question? How many of you has no a Facebook account? Ha ha. No, you don't have. Okay. Uh, how many of you has no, has no Facebook account? Has no? Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> so it seems that the, I have. And by the way, I did, I did not by myself. It was a student. The students, you know, did it. So if you go to my homepage, sometimes you see something that is almost, you know, death. So, yeah. No, 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 that's, that's, no, but I know, I know, but I mean, I'm, I'm aware of new technology, so I enter in the LinkedIn by myself, that is a social network, but not in Facebook, because I'm not interested in, okay, so they say, okay, no, we play, you know, this kind of, of jokes, but really, I found really boring, I found it really boring, so, but it's my, my idea, but I see that uh, it's shared by many here, right? That are almost uh, game designer. So this is the risk about the use of this kind of, uh, of, uh, gaming, uh, of gaming, because I consider 
uh, social network, a sort of, of game, a big game. Um, what is important is to underline that uh, the quality, the good quality of, of it is that uh, the, um, actually uh, this vision make aware as that the urban space becomes a space where flows and places are in dialogue. The word dialogue is quite important. And uh, it could be enable uh, reco or reconstruct relationship with, within the, the function and the meaning that is fundamental for the, the city and for community existence. So go back to the, from the space of interaction to the space of participation. Uh, I don't want to go to the history of gaming, urban gaming simulation, but you are aware that there's a lot of history. I mean, the first uh, uh, urban gaming simulation was developed in the late 50s, uh, as we conceive urban gaming simulation, and they are still ongoing, some, some uh, design and urban gaming simulation. So it has a long history, not like the business game, uh, but it has a long history. Um, so, uh, uh, there were, the 90s were a moment uh, where three different sectors has different um, evolution. Mm, the evolution on information communication technologies through the accessibility for almost everybody of, mm, call it computer okay, or, uh, or media in general. And uh, also in the, um, the, in the 90s about the fact that we emphasized a lot of, uh, we left the paradigm of omnicomprehensive planning. Because since 70s, but we are a bit late, we discover that we can model, we can keep under control all the development of the city. So. We, we can't simply, so we left it, so we were, we were looking more to, let's say, a weak uh, management. Uh, to when I use the word weak, I use the word weak in purpose, uh, because it means light. But there is uh, a theory about this, that is uh, il pensiero debole, the weak thought, by Vattimo, that is one of Italian philosopher, and was followed by people like Andrea Branzi, who is an artist, architect, and planner, uh, that use also the weak design of architecture. So I, I use the, 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 in purpose, the word weak. Um, so the, um, as I said, we try to, to find new ways how to face urban transformation, how to face urban phenomena, how to develop, how to deal simply with the city and with big changes. Uh, we are in the country where in the, I mean, 90s, a lot of changes starts, started. So this kind of, of, of changes we have also to, to, to think of. So um, since, that, that period, we start to uh, privilege all the area of participation or in general of involvement in the process in all levels. Information, communication, interactions, uh, everything that, is, uh, that can include not only the stockholder, but their interest group uh, and uh, the citizens. Uh, this I have to, to say because it's not a new really new paradigm. Already, planners include stakeholders in their, even in the zoning, but they include only partially. The vision the night is to try to include as much as possible their vision. Uh, gaming, I, I will skip, I will go really quick on this because I think that you, you know, but I just want to remember, remind you that gaming simulation uh, had a countless number of uh, classification, taxonomies, 
and uh, if I can uh, say without to offend anybody, everybody of us try to find a way how to classify, to identify the, 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 the object that is working with or he, she is working with that are gaming simulation. Um, um, by, by education, I am a designer, but the first time that I uh, start to try to uh, organize my knowledge about gaming simulation was when I started a long process of understanding how to create a taxonomy. That was a long trip, and uh, it makes me, it, make, it made me understand more deeply what is gaming simulation. So this is, for the beginners, this is, let's say, is a really good exercise. Only you must be aware that there are many. So you don't, you, you cannot fall in love just with the first one that you met, with the first girl or the first boy, but just experience a lot, okay? Uh, so um, what I want to underline here is uh, already, as I said, was the f said before, but uh, it's quite important, so role rules in the model and simulation. Uh, simulation is, uh, you, you know, is, is an activity, but just summing up is an activity that displays different situation in time and or space, and usually they are extrapolated from real present world through a hypothetical situation. This is what I have to remark because this morning there was mm, a, a, a question a, a often we hear in our in our mm, say in our job we heard is it I doubt that this useless that is useful I doubt that it has a fact so why don't you doubt that simulation affects why nobody Let's, let's I give you a simple example. Uh, Alberto Bottari, who was an Italian uh, urban planner, now is a retired professor at the Polytechnic of Torino, one of the first uh, that in Italy sum up the, the art of urban gaming and simulation. He wrote a statement that always, I'm um, quoting always him, that when we talk about, you know, if you are using in, uh, in university, uh, gaming simulation, they are useless because we need to design, I mean, to d do physical uh, report, physical activities. Then his, uh, let's say, he said, why? We never evaluate this. We never evaluate how efficient is our lecture. We never evaluate how efficient in the knowledge of the student is the drawing of this. So why we think that um, the, the game in simulation, it was, I have to remind you, 1973. So why we don't evaluate, I mean, we don't think that the, the, the or we have to think that uh, the game itself is not, you know, useful. Uh, after 20 years, no, more, many years of working and designing game in simulation, I can tell you that it affects and has a great value. So, no, no problem. But this is a sort of uh, prejudice that, let's say, is following us. And I think that we don't have to fight with it. Just show the difference. We don't have to argue about this. Just practice the game, just play, and then we will see. So, rules. Rules, uh, sorry, rules. Roles have a um, functional meaning, is a character, and what I want to underline is, is a, in a specific context. But even if you use it as in a specific context, it could be that you're in the game, the context is different, so also the roles that you design will change. Uh, maybe someone can help me. The one that is uh, just nomic. Never heard about nomic? No? Even you, maybe Jan? Heard. It's a game that is based on rules. The, game, the players play the game exchanging the rules. 
adding new rules, changing the rules. Only is only rule based. So this is an interesting experiment uh, to face when you have to design uh, a game. So this is interesting for the for the for the designer. There are various types of rules: qualitative, quantitative. Uh, they consider in type, the space, their verbal, gestural, a word, punishment, negotiable, fixed, implicit, explicit, blah, blah, blah. But in all cases, rules should ex correspond to the implicit and or explicit purposes of the game. I take a breath because you, you, uh, let's say, uh, watched this morning the presentation and you watched the frame of tax, tacit knowledge and... Um, as, um, explicit knowledge. So, what is difficult, but we have to to think about, is as a game designer, and 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 Jan was saying, you put all together. So this is when you have to work with with rules. Um, I never use the word simulation without model, and uh, because. Uh, Probably the, the, my scene is that I'm an urban planner and designer. So I'm, I'm always looking through the designer point of view. And the modeling is the first, the first way how you, you design, you draw things. And for me, model and simulation are referring to a mechanism that is linking all rules, roles, and resources uh, through, uh, through the cause-effect uh, relation and they can generate possible results and, and uh, they co correspond to a given situation. Um, the, uh, this is the part of the game, but we have also the urban planning practice, and the planning practice searches for making readable the phases of the participation process, meeting, exchanging information, adaptive points between the previous phase and the real space of organization. So, or the system, urban system. Uh, one of the points that I, I arise, uh, um, meanwhile I was working in a computer and, and urban modeling, was, uh, and the role of uh, urban planners is about the concept of bricoler. Um, if someone is familiar with anthropology, you know uh, Levi-Strauss, and this is uh, something that he wrote about, about the knowledge, how we build our knowledge, that we are living the engineer type of knowledge that has a sequence, that has a specific uh, input and, and is expected specific output, but uh, we are working on the bricolage area, our, um, era. Uh, it means that uh, uh, we are working in such a kind of environment where the level of uh, um, find the right resources, find the right places, find the right instruments, find the right or define the right actors is quite difficult. So what we can do, uh, if we want to do what I said before, link all together is try to find how put not proper, maybe devices, maybe materials, maybe actors, maybe a scenario together in order to obtain something that is readable. Uh, the the bricolage uh, week project, I call it, is a sort uh, of, of a canvas where we can uh, act, we can dispute, we can build and decide. Uh, and also, in this way, we can think about uh, or we can arrange a sort of point uh, from which is we can start to uh, redefine a system or a city. This is just an example uh, of bricolage, of designer that already uh, were also bricoler these two chairs by Achille Castiglioni, and uh, uh, maybe you can recognize the pieces that are composing the chair. So the meaning of bricoler is just put 
elements that originally were not thought for that in a new one, like the 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 the, the sella. I don't know in Italian the uh, the seat of the bike is is right. See, but you can see. I mean, I don't have to translate. Is some a sort of a chair where you can just play and balance, but you don't. You don't ride, you don't run. And the second one is made by um, um, farmer machine, tractor, you know? So the, this is the seat of it, but this table is not moving right now. And it's made, but it has the same uh, qualities. It could be, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, used for hours without to feel any, any problem. So uh, this is, of course, it was in the in the 70s uh, again. So you can see that this uh, idea or this view is in a, in, a, in a time where you can experience and experiment a lot. Right now, I don't think that we can. And by the way, both, if you buy now, are really expensive. So. Uh, another our objection that I have is, uh, as I said before, but you know, you cannot use you can use a game to understand the plan. You can use a game for, you know, make people to participate to some activities, but mm, you cannot use it as you know to make a plan or really to understand how to find new solution for uh, or uh, design a space. Um, I'm quoting here uh, um, a colleague of mine that unfortunately died uh, 10 years ago, really, really young, and um, he worked a lot on the on the idea of Giovanni Ferrari. Giovanni was working a lot on um, the idea of uh, playability of the plan, but not in the sense that we are thinking now. Playability in the sense of a game that is played, but how the plan could be considered again. So uh, he said, there is no inevitability of the process. On the contrary, the plan proceeds as a game, exactly to avoid the risk of authority access and the fallacy of prediction, to consider constantly unexpected effects that may arise from its own development. So what you can see here is As I said before, the paradigm uh, that we had in the, uh, especially with the rational paradigm of sciences, as a planner, we can plan. We can plan exactly the output. We can plan exactly the development of the future. We can plan exactly how the things will go. But he said, no, it's not like that. Even in this, under this uh, view, uh, this is a game. That we have, that we are playing. Uh, how can we apply the game? So, uh, gaming simulation contributes to the construction of various and sometimes original forms of participation. There are unexpected forms of participation that burst out from during the game when you play the game. Uh, some suggestion. And games create new forms that do not forge the roles of the participating communities, such as decision makers and experts. So this, this, this point of view uh, is quite important because uh, I'm talking about endless game. I mean, when we start to play a gaming simulation with a group of people, uh, be sure that you, if you don't say, stop it, you are starting, but I mean, not in the physical, in the moment, I mean the physical moment of the game, but sometimes you have to tell to a group of people that you are working, stop it to refer and to play as you were playing in the, in the game before. So uh, there is uh, a lot of, um, I'll say, um, creativity that is generated by, by the game. There is a lot of thoughts, a lot of ideas. 
Um, when I started to work in, a, when I presented in 1995 in the Isaga conference, uh, my idea about taxonomy. Um, Professor Clubbers just suggested me to do something with my students. Uh, he said, do you know, Paula, you have to just to do a small exercise. Deconstruct the game, a famous one, and then try with the students to reassemble it and see what happened. I can tell you that when I did the, this exercise and uh, Willy Chris, I think, in 1994, 1995, was, was, was witnesses this experience with uh, a lot of students of architecture in Venice. And uh, at that time, we, we give, I give to the students four games and they have to deconstruct and put together again. And the design, I mean, the, the, the result was a new game. Not this, the original one. And I'm talking about Simso, Clag, uh, Metropolis, so really well-known and famous game. What I mean is that trust on the power of the action, uh, of the uh, ability of the gaming to enhance creativity, to, uh, let's say, to stimulate ideas. And this is particularly important as I'm doing actually working in participatory process. I see here a lot of, uh, of uh, Dutch members and, and Germans and they are familiar with participatory approach, uh, processes. But for instance, in Italy, we are still not. So this is really difficult to, to deal with this. Uh, this is a quotation, but uh, uh, about planning participation can make a decisive contribution to the process of appropriation or reappropriation of the space by individuals who dwell in it. It offers as well different ways of dealing with individual and collective capacities of perception and action. Uh, in my experience, when we use gaming simulation in a starting process of participation, you have wonderful results. Uh, the meaning of appropriation or reappropriation actually in our cities of the space is like, this is, I don't know, do you know Highline in New York? Never heard about it? Yes, someone has heard. So uh, for the one that doesn't know, this is a Highline, is a tramway, is a, is a railway that was dismissed and uh, through participatory process uh, from the inhabitants, from the association, they didn't accept to destroy it or to use it for other purpose. And then there was a process of development and the transformation of that space. And this space is, uh, let's say, it was a long process. It was, uh, it is still ongoing, it's still ongoing, but as you can see here, this is a big infrastructure just cutting the, the, the city and it becomes a sort of linear park. Uh, and you can see here how it can transfer the city. So uh, um, let's say that the, the most important thing is to find a way how uh, create signs uh, on and users of the, a territory or a space that at least partially is perceived and shared context. So without this, we cannot play, game, we cannot play the game um, itself, but we cannot play also the game of plan. Uh, I have to, s I'm sorry for the one that you already uh, um, uh, saw it, but I would like just to show you um, a, a quick video that is about uh, a gaming simulation because this is a long process. 13 year 14 years ago, 14 years ago, 
uh, there were um, a big uh, financial uh, support by European Union to some uh, to a project that is called Literary Park in Italy, and it was based on the concept that the, the spaces, the places, could have uh, not only identity value but it could have also uh, or affect also economical development. So. In some places, like, uh, I don't know, Grazia de Ledda, the place where this writer lived for years, or a place where Primo Levi, uh, Primo, Carlo Levi, sorry, Primo Levi is another writer, Carlo Levi, um, uh, was uh, confined under the fascism for one year, uh, that is Aliano, could be a place where um, uh, they can uh, increase or stimulate or develop some uh, forms, not only of participation, but forms of uh, um, increased employment, increased uh, good use of, of uh, the natural environment, etc. So they give the money and nothing happened, except physical things, like uh, restoration of a house, a museum that nobody wants to, to, to see, and uh, some, uh, let's say, some event, but like spot events, so without any connection with the land. So I was called uh, two years later, in 1999, to design, um, they want to design, a, a, let's say, a gaming simulator, educational game for kids in order to spread and inform about the existence of the park, what the park is doing. Literally, par literature park doesn't mean physical, only physical space, of course. It means culture, it means different interactions. It's not a natural park. Has no, what I mean is, has no border. Not physical, not virtual. Uh, so, what I did was a video game nice, I don't want to show to you, it's an Italian, uh, a lot of people was involved, artists, uh, musician, I, I mean a lot of people. Then I, I give my, 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 my game to the, to, the, um, to the client and they say, fantastic, we will print, we will carry, we will print some hundreds of copy and then let's say for some reason I was called there um, six months later, so I say, what about the game? Was appreciated, and mm, 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 so I discover, uh, you know, under the corner, a lot of uh, all the boxes of the CD. No one was caring about this, you know. They just pay for it, and they left it. So I, I felt really angry about this. I felt really frustrated about this. Uh, I mean, I was already paid, so that was not that, that the problem. So I said, okay, let's do it in another way. Uh, if you agree, we can uh, just uh, make an agreement. In one year, this game will be played in the main square. I mean, the main square is only one. It's, it's, a, it's a village of 900 people, okay? But anyhow, in the main square. Uh, so it happened. It took a lot of time. By, by me and by people that was working with me. Sorry, and some of you already, sh um, uh, I mean, what is the video here? Watch the video already, but it just to, we, we, we will go quickly, but just to make you understand, when we talk about the game, in the, in the, in the, in the place, they said, oh, uh, this is just kids. So I started from kids. I went to the school, I selected the school with the teachers. We select some classes in three different schools of different villages, including Aliano. And then uh, um, we start a process of education. The teachers thought about the matter, you know, and they play the game itself. And then we said we want to play and this happened. Uh, we want to play in the, in the open space with kids. That was a strategy because, of course, the kids has parents and relatives. And in the rural communities, a lot of them were arising. And then 
we said, okay, not only the kids, also the audience will play a game. And then, you know, it started the process of involvement. Quite difficult, but it started. So, um, we can skip it. But anyhow, you know, when you are working, you are in this shape. An interview from the TV, the broadcasting, but I mean, I didn't care. So, anyhow, the, the kids was enthusiastic, the parents as well. Um, all the actors, this is another important thing. It was me and the and other two people, but all the actors were local one from the community. The team was composed by the people from the village. Musician, everybody was composed by the people of the village, not by, you know, Venetian people that is uh, coming. So, uh, uh, it was a great success, and I thought, done. Okay, so this is a good start, and then it will go ahead. What is your guess? It didn't. So we need another step again, you know? So we say, okay, just do it again. Just make it frequent. So now, actually, uh, I have to say that there are a lot of small economical activities there that are related with the park. Uh, there is a young artist that is doing some lab. Uh, there is an implementation of what we call the albergo diffuso, that is like homestay. Uh, not really bed and breakfast, it's like more homestay, and, and so other things. Anyhow, this is, uh, uh, I show to you because it's uh, a good example. So there was also a Japanese colleague, I think that you can recognize, Professor Kaneda here that was just watching uh, because his interest. And here you can see the, 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 the audience. You know, that what was funny in this game is that these people was, you know, we play in the, in the square. These people was just watching from the, the houses. So, and then slowly, slowly, they came and they participate to the game. So this is what, what, what uh, happened of good. But also, this is, um, I want to warn you about the fact that you must be aware that the gaming itself, just once, is not something as any other thing that you have to think, okay, it will solve my problem. Then, it will go, you know, and especially in the, in the field of participation, but design, any kind of, of uh, so I hope that is, I'm not sure. I will leave it because it will start from the beginning and I want to be sleepy more than what you are. So, uh, uh, what are the conclusion, and, and maybe before the conclusion, mm, I will show to you something else. The process of, of design is, uh, I mean, from our point of view, and I am this kind of designer, is quite, uh, let's say, uh, right now, difficult to work with because uh, we are facing new way of design. And we have to teach new way of design. So, there are, I want just to show quickly this, this, uh, this uh, program that was in uh, uh, so-called license in urban education. Uh, I mentioned before uh, the, the chairs by Achille Castiglioni. Uh, there is other examples. I just give you one because I'm fond of it, but you can find a lot of. That is lessons in urban education. It means that we have to interact with uh, 
um, other disciplines, like in this case, like uh, with the photographer, to understand how to use the potentiality of actions that are related with gaming to increase the level of awareness on the consciousness of the urban environment, of urban transformation of the citizens. This is just uh, some uh, pictures that were posted in all the uh, por uh, Portland. It, it was an uh, example in Portland city. Uh, like with some phrases, some descriptions, and uh, you know, it has nothing to do with uh, um, specified actions. I mean, it, the, the meaning wasn't to, we want to increase awareness of, I don't know, how to collect garbage or, no. It was to create a civic society. Okay, to increase the meaning to be part of a society. So that's, that was that one. Some remarks, and if I have time and I'm not uh, boring you, what time is it? <gasps> God. Okay, just because I want to play a small game, would you like to play? So, just some remarks, okay? And then, so, we, we talk about today to make a city, okay? And uh, uh, to make a city nowadays is to put together a countless number of uh, view, needs, interests, and requirements. And uh, a city is a tangled skin of relations. And, uh, in my opinion, this is where and why game and uh, gaming simulation are extremely useful and are in the indispensable true instruments, in my opinion. There are not such other kind of instruments in urban planning like gaming simulation with the same power, the same potentiality. Uh, and they can be used as not only participatory, educational tool, but specifically as a, um, a tool that increases knowledge of, of, uh, of us, I want to say people, of us, and uh, research instruments, that is quite important. So, yellow plus blue plus hundreds of green, in short, playing to understand, imagine, design, modify, and teach about the city. So. Um, um, hope that you catch the core of my of my my intention, and uh, also the one that doesn't know me because probably, you know, some of you already knows and experienced in my way of of doing things. So what I want to do right now is to experience this virtual space, virtual environment using a game that almost of you know quite well, Cabbages and Goats. Would you like to play quickly? Sure. I need just some volunteers. I mean, any, 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 because I have four teams. So any kind of volunteers, four, at least four, at least four. Oh, okay, yes, we can. It depends if everybody is. So you can be just one team here, it's fine. And a second one here. Willy could be, could you be? There, that's one, that's one. Okay, so. Yes, yes, that's fine. Meanwhile, you are taking pointers. I, I will just give you an idea what are my students doing. So, just four teams. One could be this one. Okay, first one. Second one. Third one. Elizabeth is leading the, the third one. Is it okay? Observer and, okay. And the fourth one, okay? Oh, which one? We start just by chance? Okay. 
what would you like to be? Green, yellow, pink, blue? Pink. Okay. Pink. So it means that if they are pink, if they are pink, if they are pink, you are green, cabbages. You are yellow, goats. You are pink, wolves, and you are blue, hunters. Okay. Green, pink, uh, yellow, green, yellow, pink, and blue. So here you see my students develop a lot of, uh, I, I'm teaching urban planning and design. I'm not teaching urban gaming simulation, but I teach through urban gaming simulation. This class is a master class of uh, me in fifth year and of architects, and they were disparate because my colleague,